now that's that's it. All we have to then do is just to append it to our list. I realize to depend U and R, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what we should, what we can also do is, um, we, I just add an N here just to be sure. Um, and then um, we do, um, we just uh, we just append a date to this list. So we have basically a date list for our realized PNLs and a date list for our unrealized PNLs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, but do you want to um, put it to the unrealized underscore DT or to the normal unrealized? Oh, oh no, no, you're right. Uh, to the underscore DT. Thank you. <laughs> Always good if someone smart checks my code. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm producing too many errors. Now, there's another really important thing here. Um, and I can ask you this question, but you probably would start. Why do you think I put it at the top? Why did I why did I put this calculation of the unrealized PNL at the top and not at the bottom? Because you know, when we run through this, we're actually changing uh impost potentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but I do it here before I change the position. Why do you think that is? I and think... and what I want to do is basically with this question is I want to I want you to to really think deeply because what what's interesting is with all this uh, backtesting and so on you can it's so easy to make tiny little mistakes but they completely screw up everything and that's why uh, I want to point this out really uh, uh, in detail because it's so 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 important mm -hmm. so so have a guess so. I would say, like as we as we just uh, elaborated before, it's like when you have kind of like the the day from before as a reference, you you need that from the beginning, right? Because you kind of we go into the loop and then we have it first as a reference. Because otherwise, if we would put it at the at the bottom, we wouldn't have. I mean, we would have a reference, but not from the beginning on, so to say. Yeah, yeah, you're right. When we put it at the bottom. We basically already have we already have a new we already have a new um, um position right but it's not it, it's not the position that refers to the previous period right because here we have the previous period right today minus yesterday but this already refers if we go after the the calculation we're already referring to the next period which is effectively wrong and so that can give us a lot of trouble so it's really important to have this in the correct position and this is when you build back tests this can this can easily go wrong uh if, if you're not really really careful uh because you think well if i put it above or below what difference does it make actually it makes a huge difference so um let's see if this runs and then um, we can maybe plot it So it's running, it's producing a few entries and exits. And then what we want to do is let's just plot this on top, right? So we just plot it basically in the same plot. Let's see what we get. Oh, there you go. So let's just uh, maybe comment this one out and plot it again. Ah, there we go. So So it's actually plotting. Um, for some reason, um, it doesn't plot the other one. Maybe I think when we went to the new um, to the new code, maybe there's something wrong we've done. Ah, see, dates. We actually had numbers as dates here before, so we want to uh, change that. So a little bit of debugging here. So see here we had our index, and all we have to do is effectively instead of using the index we just to replace it with the dates. And now the interesting thing comes when we plot both of them, we want to see something that looks similar. Bam. Mm -hmm. Nice. It looks kind of similar, right? What do you think? 
Yeah. Like yeah. It, there's some now, changes now, like in the beginning, but <laughs> yeah, there's a few differences, right? But what you want to see is see you want to see these points here always coming back to those mm -hmm. to those dots. Now the thing is this, and this is really interesting. When we use percentage returns, yeah. So for our trades, what we're doing is we're adding up percentage returns. And and for a whole trade, right? The percentage return, the reference price. So so we've got a price difference, but for for our realized returns, the reference price is the beginning, is the entry price of the trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we look uh, for our unrealized returns, the reference price is always changing. It's always another one. So what that means is if we actually do percentage returns, we end up getting slight differences between unrealized and realized returns. When we use dollar returns, it should exactly be the same, mm -hmm. right? So let's try this again just with dollar returns because um, because then we should it should look slightly different. So what I'll do is I'll just change it over to dollar returns. And so what we do is we, oh, let's just get rid of um, these guys here. Um, yep. And also here. And let's just do this. Oh yeah, well, we've done it here already. So now that we have dollar returns, so this is really important. When you sometimes plot these things, it's very easy to um, get problems. And you see, you can't really see much difference here. But basically, when you write a backtest, the way I always do it at the beginning is I actually plot the realized and the unrealized returns both. And they have to match, mm -hmm. at least in, in dollar terms. In percentage terms, they don't match exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is important. Um, Quite often when you start out, you see this and it doesn't match and you think, well, why do they, why do they not match? And the reason is just because of the percentages. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it, it, you know, because you use different reference prices uh, for the differences. So um, make sure you make sure you remember that and it, it'll, it'll help you a lot uh, later on, but you can see now, the PNL curves perfectly match.